like these are the years that I want to keep going. And so I was fighting a lot of um, insecurities. Mm -hmm. But then at the same time, I was fighting a lot of people in my ear telling me to go this way. It was like, well, man, you got this, you got this, you won the house, you know, you won your divorce, you got all this now, man. You know, you can just move around. But I didn't feel like a winner, you know, because I didn't have a wife. Like, I felt like a winner when I was married. But right. single? No. Mm -hmm. I, like, like, I know me. Like, I know me. Now, I'm wise enough to know now, like, nah, I don't want to. But it's still that temptation that's there. And right. I know the difference between when I'm married and when I'm not. And I'm a much better person. I function better. I execute better. I apply things better when I'm married. It's just, it just, I like, I don't it know. It is what I, it is. It is what it is. I have a very it good. It is life. what it is. Especially when I got a partner who, 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 who execute just, who executes just like I do, mm -hmm. and, and who have their own mind. And, and, and see, see, that's another thing about me too is that my woman, you have your own mind. You know, see, you're very, you're a very independent thinker. But there's gonna be times where you won't have to bring that in for the sake of the group, right? For the union, mm -hmm. and you know we all got to come together, right? And so in my last relationship, that fell apart. It was going right. good at first, and then it fell apart. And so for me as a man, at that time, I mean there were available females. I mean I could have went that route, but it was like man, I just. I just want to do more. It's like I just want to do more, yeah. and so that's so why I just that's why right. I said I'm I'm just sitting in the house. I'm a, I'm gonna cry it out. I'm gonna pray it out, and then I'm 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 gonna just work on me, and then I'm yeah. gonna to God for what I want. So y'all are trying to figure out what to happen and how we just come in in the middle of the show, right? Well, we imagine that speaks. Listen, this is Walter Perry, yes. and. He is the CEO of Suit Up, and we're in the middle of a conversation, and we just want to bring y'all in the conversation. Um, mm -hmm. We are talking about the nucleus family and the wick being woven and, and that rip that's been woven in the nucleus of the Black family. We are talking about how the Black family and the Black woman have, um, uh, the Black man and the Black woman need to come together and have a conversation. Um, how we were 80% in 1968, we were 80% of us were married. Now in 2022, 80% of us are unmarried. Yeah. And a lot of us are checking out of relationships. We're checking out. We don't want to be in relationships, men and women. This is about to be a dynamic show, y'all. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hi guys, I'm Lady Falana, CEO and founder of Endure Entertainment. When you think of clean entertainment, think of Endure Entertainment. When you think of Endure Entertainment, think of clean entertainment. The Endure Entertainment television personalities. We are the A-Team. We're more than just a team, we're family. Look at all of the different syndicated podcast directories we are on. Go ahead and download those apps so you don't miss our shows on the go. Endure Entertainment LLC started October 2021. Now we're in 17 countries outside of the United States. Featured in CBS, Fox, and NBC. Gospel Choice Music Awards nominated for Independent Broadcast Network of the Year. We do more than just TV. We also do virtual concert extravaganza. All right, y'all. You've heard it here. Endure Entertainment. When you think of clean entertainment, you think of Endure Entertainment. Welcome again to Anjanette Speaks, the real, the raw, and the inspiring. We are going to bring up our man again and continue our conversation because we had a whole technical difficulty. <laughs> Yo, I just hit the record button and was like, you know, we just gonna we're gonna flow. That's what we're gonna do. So listen, tell me about why 
being the man and being in masculine energy is important. We hear this thing about toxic energy, toxic masculine energy. And here, I'm going to tell you something else. I'm, D, the de- the emasculation, was it demasculation? Emasculation of the black man. Of the emasculation of the black man is the agenda that is being pushed along with everything else. So now black women are the head of the household. A lot of the reason because we had to be, right? Because some of these brothers didn't want to stay or they were abusive or whatever the situation is, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Tell me about masculinity. How does a man embody masculinity and still be tender, warm, gentle, without feeling like he's compromising himself? That starts from birth. That starts from your parents, um, how much love and affection that they show you. Um, I've come to learn that People who've grown up in households where there's a lot of love and support, uh, a lot of understanding, a lot of talking and working through things, those people tend to have uh, more balanced and more stable lives than people who grow up in households where you get yelled at, you get punished, you get whooped, uh, there's, there's an absent parent or both parents absent. So those things contribute to the the overall um quality of life of a child you understand what i'm saying yeah and so if if and, and see this is what makes nuclear family so important because when you have both parents there who are of sound mind so that like like just being present is not always good enough you got to be present and active yes pick this present and active in I like your child's life not present just, and active. Present, present and active. active. If you're not present and if you're not active, please start being that. Please. Right. Because, you know, you've heard a lot of times, you know, somebody was there, but they wasn't really there and all this. But you got to be present and, you know, you got to be active. That's the first thing. The second thing is that you have to set, uh, set the foundation real early. And that means as babies, you know, that um, like, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have to use my grandson for a, a really good example. Okay. My kids, my, my kids, um, except for my daughters up to a certain point, like I whooped my sons, but I didn't whoop my daughters until they got like up in age. And so, and it was, and, and it wasn't really that much, but my grandson, like I don't whoop him at all. And, you know, uh, the kids, like, 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 my wife had kids before we got married, and so her kids, I don't whoop them at all. Like, I don't even have the desire to, to like whoop them. I talk to them, like, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I hug them, right? I hug mm-hmm. them. I mm-hmm. give them kisses. Mm-hmm. You know, like, 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 I encourage them because that's healthy for them to, for them to know that there's people in the house who who takes an interest in the things that they're doing. Um, that's another thing too, was that my problem growing up was that, not that I didn't feel like nobody loved me, I just feel like nobody really took an interest in the things that I was doing when I was doing right. They only took an interest when things got bad or you know I did something wrong, somebody act like they interested in the way I'm like, okay, but I'm playing football, I'm doing this, I'm, I'm doing this over here. And you know nobody's not really taking the interest, and you know right. it's really throwing me off as a youngster right. because right. I'm thinking that you supposed to have you supposed to have support all the way through, but it wasn't always like that, and so it made me act out. So imagine a kid in 2022, as you can see if you just look on Facebook, you know, like two of my students just died, two brothers, like. Those, those 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 two boys that just got killed. One got killed on Friday, and then one got killed on Monday. I don't those know who they are. Yeah, I don't know who they Devin, are. Devin, Devin, and and Amari, and guess who their daddy is? Colin Christian. 
That's their daddy. Oh, you know? no. That's what I'm trying to tell you is that all of us are connected yeah. in, some, in some shape, form, fashion. And then no, their mom is sweetheart. Man. Yeah. Their mom is sweetheart. So, like, these boys and these girls who are How old oh, were they? They were, uh, let me see. Uh, I think Amari's brother was 24. Hmm. And I forgot how old Amari was. Man, they couldn't be no more than between the ages of 20 and 25. These, 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 these boys are young. You know what I'm saying? And these girls are young. These kids are young. And the family structure is so torn apart. These kids don't feel connected to anything except for what's on social media. So as parents and as mother and father, especially in the same home, it's important to show that unity, uh, not just when, not just when y'all come together to like punish the child, but also showing that unity through other stuff, showing affection to the mother, showing affection to the father, uh, doing nice things for the mother and the father, you know, going out on dates, you know, setting an example for your kids and letting them know, taking your kids on cruises, taking your kids out of town, flying them out of places and get them out of this city and expose them to different stuff. Not just once every blue moon, but it has to be a regular thing. And it doesn't always have to be somewhere far because I live in Rockport, Texas right now. And mm-hmm. we like right here by the beach. So we like mm-hmm. two miles from the beach. We, 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 will, we will be there during spring. Uh, yes. Uh, yes, ma'am, come on down. You more we than will be there. So, um, uh, oh, you're more than welcome. But the thing, the, the point I'm trying to push is that when you got society out here, especially people don't want to hear this, Black Lives Matter is pushing an agenda that's destroying a nuclear family, surprisingly. You know, I had supported them. I marched with them. I donated money. But then when I went and read the, the guiding principles, it didn't have anything about the nuclear family. It just had, they want to get rid of men. And they want to have, I don't know, some alternative stuff going on. But no matter what you choose, that child that's growing up in that household needs to have a family that's working together, living together in harmony and peace. So it, it doesn't no. matter what you choose. It just that child needs to be in a very natural, uh, peaceful environment. So if you have children, right? And right. if you have or have, or are you co-parenting? I urge you to um, be active and be present. Yes. Okay, yes. whatever you have to do to do that, because I know sometimes us women we are not very keen on it. if we don't like you no more. You got a new girlfriend, you can't see your kids. We gonna stop true. doing that. That's true. Doing that. But let me stop real quick and say to my classmate, um, Portland Christian, I am. So sorry for your loss. I will be praying for you. And Jeanette speaks. And my team will be praying for you and your family. I am so sorry for your loss. I did not know yeah. that. Shout, um, out to, shout out to Cricket and Sweetheart. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Cricket and Sweetheart. Y'all don't know that. That's that's Eastside. Y'all don't know nothing about Y'all don't know nothing about that. That's Eastside till we die. Listen, this generation right here, we stick together. Bro, no matter if we see each other for years or not, we stick together. Courtney is class of 95, we class of 94. 94. And, you know, like, we all Cherokees, you know what I'm saying? And so, Courtney has done work at my house, you know what I'm saying? Because he's a plumber. Mm -hmm. He's a licensed plumber. He has his own Mm -hmm. business. Mm -hmm. Uh, He's come and done work at my house a couple of times. So, we, he and I have talked about just kind of what's going on in the world, you know what I'm saying? And so, I've talked to a lot of people, but to have somebody I know grow up since basically middle school, um, and I know very well to have him lose two sons with you know within days, you know, and then have them two parents lose two sons like that. Um, I can't think of anything to say to him, but then at the same time. This is a time for our community to like wrap our arms around our people and let them know that, hey, you know, I'm really sorry for your loss. 
we got you. And really get these people. Don't, yeah. don't just tell these people you got them and then you don't got them like they did. <laughs> I'm going to go there later. I, I ain't going to talk about it right now, but I'm going to go there later. So, so. <laughs> Cause he finna get off on something else. I'm yeah, yeah, I'm finna go there. I'm finna go there. <laughs> he finna dig. He about to dig. You gotta catch him. So we were talking about the the um, the nuclear family and how important it is for mm-hmm. um, the men and the women. Even if you are not in the household with the child, you can still be active and involved. Okay, yes. because that is what makes a man be a man. Um, I have a son. And I cannot, even though I I have women disagree with me all the time, I'm a single mother, yes, and I he had um, a stepfather in his life, um, but I can't teach him those things that that Melvin could teach him at that time. You know what I'm saying? I could, there were certain things I just didn't know that that was a man thing, right? Right, exactly. I mean. And so I thank God for the men in my life that that are will be positive role models to my children you know to my child he you know i he got plethora of uncles and mentors and everything but he's not missing anything but i still feel the responsibility to get my child hooked up with some with a man right that is productive that is doing something so that he can see that because kids emulate what they see they don't they don't do what we tell them no they emulate what they see and so you know i haven't been the best at doing stuff when i got to my son after the first two he's what 16 years older from the oldest to the i learned a lot and some Mm -hmm. things i just don't do because i learned right and um i want to talk about black women okay right and the hurt that is in us right and Mm -hmm. how black men can learn to relate to us i told a friend of mine today that we have a lot of passed down trauma i don't know if you're aware of this walter but trauma is passed down yes Um, okay so i took a trauma informed course um, because i was working for volunteers of america and um, i took a trauma informed course we had to I did not know that Mm. and it explained so much you know about the hurt that you feel that is not even yours and then you have these women and you see us and we got this face on us we're looking like don't even do it bro (laughs) looking hard hard just looking hard just don't do it bro i ain't i don't feel like the lies today and I want to address that because we have got to heal all the way around. And I said today, I would like to see black men take responsibility for what they have done and the hurt they have contribute to black women. And I'd like to see black women take responsibility for the hurt that they cause black men. I understand you at home and grandpa got babies across the street, right? The trauma that is in you from seeing your mama cry over, you know, you know, hearing her cry, seeing what's going on, seeing her get beat, seeing her do all this, seeing him go across the street, that hurt you feel. And now your eggs feel that hurt, that trauma you have from uncle molesting you. Now your egg has that hurt. Your egg is born, your baby is born, and your baby is carrying your trauma. Yeah. Your baby gets old and ain't never been touched, but you don't want nobody touching. Mm. Yeah. Your baby gets old, ain't never been hit, but duck. Mm. Where did that come from? That comes from trauma, from the trauma that the mother experienced. Yeah. So... so and so the heartbreak, the disappointment in the nuclear family, you got to think about it, Walter. We went from being 80% married to putting our women on the streets. Yeah. Now we're 80% single mothers. That's what the, 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 the stats are totally flipped now. We went from totally 80% being married, the highest 
the highest race that was married, the highest group of people married. Now we got the highest rate of divorce. But if you look at the divorce rate, <laughs> guess who? Guess who files for divorce more? Is uh, black women. So, so, and then usually the 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 reason that they file is because. They use irreconcilable differences, which to me, that can be anything. You know, this not really. I'm like, oh shit, yeah. That, you probably just feel like you can't put it. You can't put it together and see. Right, you just can't put it together. And so I, I, you know, like when I see that, I'll be like, man, did y'all go to? Did y'all go to therapy first? Did y'all do this? Did y'all do this? Don't just quit because. Don't just quit. Don't just quit because. My last marriage, I didn't just quit. I fought for the month. I fought for my marriage for about a year. But then after a while, when you can just look at somebody's eyes and say, oh man, this person don't want me. You know, and that's when, see, see, that's the point right there where you can either make your own trauma or you can create your own victory. Because in that moment right there, when you look in somebody's eyes, and you see that the love is gone and it's nothing but disrespect there. Some people would subject subject themselves to stay in that relationship to see if this person is going to change their view on them, but it doesn't. It doesn't come you, around because the because because the vows are better for worse. For better for worse, and then and then that person lost all respect for you. So anything that you try to do is going to be diminishing returns, and so. You know, you try to go do something for this person. This person spending time with somebody else. You trying to do this. This person doing something for somebody else. And you start feeling like, well, damn, you know what I'm saying? You didn't. And then on top of that, you really didn't break it off with this person. You just kind of just hoping this person just leave you alone. But this person is trying so much. So what do you do in that situation? That's when a conversation needs to be had where you sit down and say, look, this ain't working. You know what I'm right. saying? What do you think we should do? And and, right. and that's where you talk things out with your partner. And then you make the decision saying, well, look, I think, man, we just need to go ahead and just end this, man. And I'm going to just pack my stuff up and then I'm going I'm to move. Or, right. you know, whatever. Whatever it is, you decide to do, but you got to decide to do something. So let me talk about on my end, right? Uh, I was married for 13 years and um, he filed for divorce. I did not. He did. Interesting. Mm -hmm. He divorced me. Now, that in itself, being the respondent, that's a different type of Mm -hmm. hurt. I was the respondent. I was the respondent. Feel like somebody took, you know, that green trash can outside. Mm-hmm. Feel like somebody put you in the little bag and all your goods, your loyalty, and put all that in there. All, all, in the, there. all the meals you cooked, all that, put all that hey. in there. Put that in there and put that outside <laughs> and set it next to the trash can. You know? Yeah. All I right. Mean. So here, so here, because I'm going to go down the lane, because this is what happens to those of us that are not married and had right. and hadn't, okay? Uh, uh, so then your self-esteem like you said i felt like i was somebody when i was married i felt marriage gives both men and women a sense of validation right it gives affirmation somebody wants me i come home to somebody somebody loves me Mm -hmm. when i got out of that and three four months four five months later i'm gonna give myself five months it might have been six, but I'm going to say five. Right. I get into this relationship because we know nothing about feeling right now. Right? Uh-huh. We know mm-hmm. 20, 20, 23, 26 years ago, 28 years ago, we ain't know nothing about healing. You just nothing. go from one person to another. Uh-huh. <laughs> you so know, you don't, keep it moving. don't let nothing um, uh, 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 grow up under your feet. Uh, if you get another, another man, get you another man. You know what I'm saying? Fish. Well, I'm over. Huh? It's more fish in the sea. More fish in the sea. Go catch you one. <laughs> so here's what happens. I date at the level of my self-esteem. 
Mm. What was your self esteem at the point? I just told you I was Low. in the trash bag. In the I was trash in the bag. trash. I right there on the trash. I was in the trash next to the dumpster. Yes. Right next to it. So this dude is like, oh, look at this trash. Look at all this good trash. This, who do this trash away? This good trash. Mm hmm. But because I didn't love me, didn't know that I didn't love me, didn't know that my self-esteem was 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 tainted, didn't know that I was broken, didn't know none of that. Mm -hmm. I jumped right in the relationship. I pregnant before the divorce is over. I done moved on. Mm. He moved on. I moved on. Okay. But he married up and i say that oh, she's better he married the person that he was confiding in mm. so how long they been together they were together before we got divorced they were together bef before we bought our house okay and then uh since he got back with her how long they been together they've been together the rest of the time they've been together what is this 12 10 years now mm. Well, a little over ten. Little, not, I don't think it's probably been ten that they've been together. Put it like this: they met in 07. Okay. 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 So we got divorced in 09. Okay. But they were together. You know. Oh, so, so I didn't know that. We okay. found out this later on, right? This All later right. on. This later. This the whole story later on. Okay. I'm not so, even mad at him. I'm not even. So, I'm not even upset at him. He revealed so, everything later. He didn't reveal anything. They slipped up and said it in front of my daughter. Oh, and now wow. that I know some people be sneaking and watching, they're gonna find they're gonna figure they go, <laughs> they're gonna figure out that I know. I know, <laughs> I know the deal. I know. You so the trip that you wasn't cheating is over. It was that's what it was. Right. It's cool. right. But it's cool. So look, I go and date this dude that's at the level of my self-esteem. Mm -hmm. Right? This man is not gainfully employed. This man is 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 owns his own business, right? Uh huh. Um, the business isn't set up legally or anything like that. He just had been a felon and couldn't find a job, and you know made his yeah just made his made his uh his skills work for him, and and it did pretty much. But he's a reflection of me in here, out here. And this is what's happening with this baby mama syndrome. We dating at the level of our self-esteem and we having babies by these men. We getting our feelings hurt. We getting wounded and, and messed up. I'm going to tell you why. Because these men, their self-esteem is not high. That's right. I'm about to say that. Their self-esteem is not high. A man with a high self-esteem he gonna do he gonna do two things for a woman. He gonna inspire her and he's gonna push her. Inspire you, he's gonna talk to you, he's gonna talk life into you. Like, like, well, I'm just saying this. Like, my previous you can, speak, you can say what you want to say. Right, my previous relationship, I pushed that person. Like, they was wasn't doing nothing. I told them, hey, I see something in you that I believe that I can do this, right? And 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 they did it because their man believed in them. Well, this situation now that 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 this woman I have now, I don't have to tell her as much that I had to tell the last person, but I tell her all the time, I'm like, damn you smart. Or, you know, she brings something to me and she showed me something, I take interest into it. Um, that matters. That needs so my opinion. I say, hey, I don't think that's a good idea. You know, you might want to try this, such and such. But I also allow her to do it to me. She might go, hey, Walter, I know you're trying to do this, but you know, there's, I know an easier way, or I know another way how you can kind of do this. And so, those are the type of people that you need in your life. Somebody's gonna compliment you. But also yeah. allow you to stay who you are, yeah. and so 
when you run into a man like that who 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 as soon as they see you, you start talking to them, they already know. They are they already know a real man gonna know exactly what it is he can say to you and do for you to get you back on track. Right. And then he's gonna actually do it yeah. to get you on track. He ain't gonna just talk about it. He's right. gonna say, first thing I'll ask you is, what can I do to help? Or he's gonna say, Hey, uh, you need some help with this, yes. then, then then he's gonna do it because that when you see a man do that for you, he's saying, I see value in this woman, and I'm placing value in this woman because she's somebody of interest. A lot of guys these days, well, I don't say a lot of guys, but now what I've been hearing about the dating pool now, everybody is on their own little thing now. It's like Y'all can be in the same room, somebody on their phone. Y'all not really having no meaningful conversations. It's just all about sex. And then that's it, you know, and sleeping. But to truly get the most out of a relationship, you got to you gotta find somebody who can um, unlock you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, unlock the door. I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm locked up. I'm locked yeah. up. I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. Up. Somebody's going to come up. and unlock you. And and add and challenge and challenge you in a way that makes you go, wow! I never really thought about that. Yeah. Or like, damn, man, you really brought something to me that really kind of woke me up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. You know, and just somebody to really kind of—they don't gotta agree with me, right? If you can understand where I'm coming from, you go, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I, I get you, I get you. Yeah, man, I understand that. If you can just get where I'm coming from. That's a good start. You understand what I'm saying? Um, I want to point to something because 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 we're talking about the nuclear family. In 1965, that's when it was. It was a report, and then you can look this up later. And for anybody that's um, on Saturday today listening to this, y'all can go to uh, YouTube and look for it. It's called the Moynihan Report. It was it's a report by uh, this reporter. It was in 1965. It talked about the state of the black family. What's the name of it? It's called the Moynihan Report. It's called the Negro Family, the Case for National Action, Office of Policy Planning and Research. So they did this during um, Lyndon B. Johnson's, no, yeah, Lyndon B. Johnson's, no, Ford. His presidency, and what it talked about was that. Was that right there? Is that how you spell it? Yeah. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, it's a N, and it's called the Monahan Report: The Negro Family, The Case for National Action. So basically what they were saying was that in order to get the black family back on track, you got to invest, you got to invest in the black man because the black man is the one that's going to go out, get the construction jobs, get the get all the phys- physically demanding jobs. You got to invest more to the black man. Well, that Monaghan report got pu- got a lot of pushback. And so what they ended up doing was so 1965, that's the Vietnam War, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They started shipping a lot of black men to Vietnam, so which left a lot of black women by themselves out here, single black moms. Well, if if all the strong black working black men are at war, who do you think is there? Right. Those weak, nothing ass men. The AKA the black pimp who, yeah. who came up in the community, made the hardworking black man a thing in the past. If you're a hardworking black man, he tried to make you seem like you was a joke. And even now, like the drug dealer, the hustler, you know, they get a lot more respect than a hardworking black man who goes to work and put in the hours. That's the truth. And even and even the woman want him to go hustle. She exactly. And, and so that was and, well, I'm glad you said that. My prior marriage, 
believe it or not, that was brought to me. Like it was a situation where we wasn't struggling, but every every family, well, I ain't gonna say every family, but a lot of families, you know, hit a spot where, hey, this month it ain't no extras. You know, everything's going on bills. Well, that was her first time going through something like that, where it was just maybe a month or two, but she came in one day and said, Walter, won't you go hustle a little bit? Man, you don't know how many B's and H's she got called for that. Because, first of all, I'm your damn husband. And we got kids here. And I'm setting a, I'm setting a whole example for these kids. I'm telling these kids, go to work every day. I'm up here taking them to go get applications and stuff and helping them fill out the jobs. And then you finna tell me to like go back to something that I escaped from? Are you stupid? You know, so men, we gotta prove ourselves every day. And see, this is this is this is the disconnect, I feel like. Women don't understand that, just like y'all, or probably even more so, men gotta prove themselves every day. I don't care what color you are. You gotta, even more so. you gotta prove yourself every day. So like so so like me as a man. If I come and come up with an invention or idea, right? Everybody's gonna clap for me for that day. But then somebody's gonna say, okay, what you got next? You're like, well, damn, I just did this. Well, yeah, but you gotta do something else because somebody else is over here doing something else. Another man is over here doing something else. So you gotta prove yourself every day. Men go through rejection every day. When you go on a job, no. When you every try day. to no, it's reject. I don't care what color you are. Men got every, day. every day for the rest of them uh for the rest of their lives. Now, women, not so much. Not so much. And, and I'm gonna tell you this. Society right now has geared it, it's it's a woman's world. And if there if there aren't women out here giving it all in support of Whatever it is they're trying to do, if it's trying to have a husband, if it's trying to have a family, if it's trying to have a career, if it's trying to have whatever. If they're not giving their all and then they're not opening doors for other women or other men to walk through there, mm -hmm. then all this is for nothing. Right. You're only thinking about yourself. And so right. men, when we're doing things, we have to think about everybody else. We don't always do it, but... We got to think about everybody else. Right. I think that's a neglect right there that, that been a lot of men only been thinking about themselves and they haven't been taking in, in, in account the woman that's been standing by them right. or the kids that's been supporting their bull job behavior. Right, right. Yeah. And then here's another thing. Like for me, what I've learned too, we have to be self-aware of what's going on and why we're doing the things we're doing. Mm -hmm. Why do we have five and six babies by six different men? Mm -hmm. What is that about? Like, because the common denominator here is me. Yeah. With these brothers, right? The common denominator here is me. So then if the common denominator here is me, then what am I doing wrong? I look up and I know we're getting in relationships. We've been in a relationship with him for three years. We've relationship with him for two, him for 10, you know, him for four, him for yeah, three. But you've never been married to neither one of them, though. And you've never been married to none of them. Because marriage is no longer attainable for black women. Not saying, you know, people get me with absolutes. Like, you know, you say absolute and then it's like, um, people be like, oh, you know, you saying all women. I'm not saying all women. I'm not saying all black women. I'm not saying it's absolute. But what I'm saying is for the majority of black women, okay, we're 80% single here. The majority <laughs> of us, let's say that because, you know, you got to put in sensitive. But when you say all and you need to say some, okay, but check this out. We need to check ourselves. Correct. See, we can't control nobody else, right? We can't control what a black man do, how many times a man come in and out of our life, how many times we date, how many times. But what we can control is us and who we are as women. And we can value ourselves. And unfortunately, that wasn't taught. 
Do you remember anybody sitting you down and saying, Walter, you got to love yourself? Yeah, I do. <laughs> In prison. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> but how, how, if we would, if that, that is part, my son, so my girls, you know, I told them they were beautiful and all this stuff like that. But my son, I try to make sure, I try to make sure that I speak into him. You are smart. You're intelligent. You're yeah. very, you know, you know, do you know, how do you feel about yourself? Do you think you're handsome? Do you, do you have, do you know, you got that sweat? Hey, why do you do that? Are you covering up an insecurity? Is that because you feel like you're overweight? I make him self-aware. Yeah. Because I'm raising a black man to come into society and I want him to attract women that they mama and told them they somebody. Well, see, uh, the type of women that you attract is all that that's just chemical. That's something you ain't gonna be able to control. You can't control who you fall in love with. So he might get out there and he might fall in love with, with a white woman. He might fall in love with a Mexican woman. He might fall in love with an Asian woman. He might fall in love with an Indian woman. Um what you want is healthy love out of your son, regardless of who he's with. Now, I know the ideal thing is to be with black woman or be with a black man but it's 2022 and Watch so, this. yeah and you know you can't the help you don't like black girls it, exactly so so they so, loud and they disrespectful a lot of young guys don't like black girls a lot of young men like white girls and Mexicans. he said hispanic he said i'm not he said they they Walk around, they got too much going yeah, on. Yeah, pat their hair all day and all that, that, that right there. Some long nails on and all of them got that split upside their head. He said, I just, I don't want to do this. My wife will tell you, I, I, and, and I'm not even going to lie, I'm saying this just sheer out of respect. When, when we started really getting serious, like, like she used to get the, she used to get the little artificial nails and the, uh, and the weave and stuff in her hand and all that. And it was really nice. But then I saw her without the nails. Then I saw her without the hair in her head. I said, damn, you got a lot of hair on your head. She was like, yeah. I said, why you don't never wear your natural hair? And, you know, she we talked about it. And then she started wearing her natural hair. And then she stopped getting the, the nails. She started getting the artificial nails and she let her natural nails grow. And so that turned That's me on. Take. That's all it takes. Turn me on even more. The thing. When, ladies, we are dressing up for us. Men like natural women. Natural. They don't like no net, they don't like lashes. No they don't what? like the long yeah. nails with the crook and the we are dressing up for us. How many times have we seen a brother with a plain Jane woman and we like? He go with her, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cause she comfortable with who she is, and yeah, and, she ain't and got to for the makeup and hair all down her back. They don't. We are. That's what men are up. looking for. Men are looking for women who are comfortable, who are comfortable not only in their own skin, but just comfortable in their femininity. It's like yes. I'm a woman, you know, like yeah, that's the so, turn on me. So I, I I keep telling black women, I said. Black women, black men don't want strong black women. We want feminine women. We want we want dainty. We want women like 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 I want like like my woman. If I grab her too hard, she gonna get a bruise on. Or she gonna get a bruise on her arm. That's feminine. That that's a feminine body. You know what I'm saying? I don't want no rough house ass bra. You know what I'm saying? That you know I gotta be squabbling with in the middle of the street or you know she like hey. Hey, my nigga, or oh, you know, hey, bro, you know, if you call me bro, you ain't get no play with that. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I'm finna be 47. I'm like, I'm looking for, I, I was looking for a certain type of female. What? Now, when I was in my 20s, I'll take the wild ass bros, the, the ones that call me bro, the ones that step all night and, and doing whatever, because that's that was my lane. But as I got older, my lane changed. And so my like, lane I was having a, a conversation with one of our classmates. Um, but I ain't gonna say his name because he ain't on Facebook. <laughs> he got, <laughs> it's, it's somebody we know, I'll tell you after this. We were talking 
And he said, uh, I said, uh, he said, uh, what you doing? I said, oh, nothing. It was good seeing you was talking. And he said, uh, I'm going, it's like 1030. I'm about to get to bed. He says, uh, I'm going out. I was like, outside? I said, you can stay up after 1030. Yeah, shit. I'm asleep. And he said, you in the house? I said, yes, I'm, I, I'm, I'm in the house. He said, "You don't go out nowhere." I said, "Not, not, a, not at night. No, not really." Oh, I'm a special case. I'm a lady. Yeah, I'm a lady. I'm, I'm sleep. Yeah. He laughed, but he was like, "I can respect that." Yeah, I'm gonna let y'all have it. Yeah, you know, I'm be in bed. I'm be in bed. Hell no. You know, y'all go ahead, but I'm in the bed. When you, when you kicked it, like, like you know, what I'm saying, I got out when I was 25 years old. So, like. I kicked it when I was young, when I got home. I kicked it real hard. I, I ran the streets. I went out of town. I did all that. And it's like, I don't even have a desire to do that. Even even if I wanted to, even if I wasn't with with the person I'm with now. Like, it's like, I would still be in the house going to bed at 10, 1030. I'll still be getting up early in the morning, 5 o'clock in the morning, 430 in the morning. Mm-hmm. You know, working out like just the same thing. It's it's just like I already did that. Like I did that when I was young, and I'm just really burnt out. And so, which brings me to a lot of these old school cats. They don't know how to let it go. And wow. that's another thing that is messing up the fabric of uh, black men and black women relationships is that these a lot of these dudes are stuck in their second childhood. You know. Yes. And they are. You see somebody that's in my that's my age. They got a hat turned to the side and to the back and all that. He more than likely stuck in the second childhood. Uh, you out here still dressing like you did when you was in the nineties. You more than likely stuck in your second childhood. And right. so that was something that I was really fighting heavily uh, against falling into because it can be an easy thing, especially a lot of these guys that used to be somebody. Yep. They still try to live off their name and stuff like that. And so they will create situations to show how real they are. Mm-hmm. And so if you're not a man that's secure in who you are and you don't have a support system, such as a loving partner or mm-hmm. family members, then you're going to feel like you can go out there and try to be stuck in your second child. Mm-hmm. And listen, it's it you know it behooves us all. I really want to like, cause me and Walter can just talk. We get on the phone and just go right till our phone dies. One of us phone dies, so right. that's what we do. But I want to bring the content of the nuclear family and encourage you, even if you do have six baby daddies, mm-hmm. if you cannot get along with them, encourage yourself, help yourself, go to counseling. And try to find a way to get along with them for the children. Mm-hmm. Now, if you, you know, I don't know your personal situation because there'll be one person that be like, well, my baby daddy is so dead. Okay. Well, you know, oh, okay. I can't do that. Okay. I'm not talking to you, sis. I'm yeah. talking to you. My baby daddy in jail. I'm talking to those of us that have to learn and try. Because, like, my son father is not in his life, right? So I can't just call him and be like, hey, now, you know, uh, we ready. You know, because is he they, out? Is he out of jail? Uh huh. He's out. Oh, oh, oh! And he just don't have a relationship with his son. No, no, no. Uh, uh-uh. uh. He doesn't. Um, he's in and out. And my son just decided that that wasn't healthy for him. So okay, okay. You know, so he was like, "I'm good." He he was twelve. He's like, he took this long to come around. I'm good. So I didn't force it on him. If he ever says to me, "I want to go see my daddy," we gonna go see his daddy. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know, like, go see him because we don't have anything against each other but i'm not gonna make steven have a relationship now right you know I'm, I'm not gonna force it if, if you know if he says hey dad all right we're gonna work this out then that's that's on that and that's what i'm saying like if you can help it and be that mediator because you know the family is Yo, yo I, I think the thing is messing up. Huh? Okay, I can hear you now. Okay, no, no, the, the, the signal went out. 
So sometimes it's the they want it's so and black, okay and black, you know, the same white, you know, all that okay. A black woman, a black and a black woman that is a threat. There is you're to now stand strong flat footed and raise your children at home with more than values. You are about to change an entire generation. Your children are gonna have children. Mm-hmm. Yep. They are going to have a black nuclear family. Then your children gonna have children, and they should have children. You store the broken family you do this. They systematically down, but we have to do it. What's the difference between What's the difference between what? All right, we back. We have to, uh, it just went out. What's the difference between us and Black Wall Street? What's the difference between, between us and Black Wall Street? The people that built Black Wall Street. Guilty. What's the difference between them and us? Is that the question you asked me? Yes, that's the question. Well, the difference is, is that they had an infrastructure already set in place. These people had banks. They had hospitals. They, they like they had a working uh, uh infrastructure like 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 unity. they were making money yes unity. So they had unity. We economic they had economic cohesion yeah so we about that but see that's another thing too is that every time black people try to get well every time black people set their stuff up White people always come mess it up. They like they never leave us alone. Like, like after slavery, they was mad we was out of slavery. So they started hunting us, passing all these laws. They were supposed to give us 40 acres in a mule. It didn't happen. They was cheating us out of land. They was redlining. Uh they never really gave us a chance to really just set up our own system. And then when Black Wall Street happened. Instead of them respecting it and saying, damn, you know, these black folks really got their stuff together. Let's go do business with them. No, they went over there and just and just destroyed the town. They did the same with Rosewood. They did the same with other towns that had a lot of thriving black people. So I'm glad you brought this up because I, I, I often hear people say they, they uh, black, flooded one. Yeah, you know, black people, yeah, flooded it and made it. Uh, right now, it's a lake. Black town. Yeah, it's a lake sits on this black town. So this is what brings me to what I hate hearing from people when they go, man, black people, man, we just don't never get our stuff together. We don't love how to... That that right there used to really irk me a lot because that let me know people don't know the history. And if you knew the history, you would know that black people have been getting their stuff together. It's just that this damn white man uh, over the past few hundred centuries, few centuries, has always meddled with with Jim Crow, with the black laws, with any type of laws that they set to make sure that black people don't get ahead. And fast forward to right now, you see everything that black people fought for, other people are benefiting from. So like a lot of these immigrants, these illegal immigrants coming over here and legal are coming over here and a lot of the grants and stuff that they're getting, these are for black people. You know, they're black when they come over here, but then when they're talking to us, oh, I'm African. Oh, I'm from here. You know, you blacks over here, y'all, and start talking to us like, you know, we don't know what's going on. But every freedom, every just about every liberty that a lot of these immigrants and these minorities in this country are enjoying is because of the back and the hard work and the diligence 
of black folks. And so that part of our history, I think that we have to recapture because that was the thing that gave us our grace. It gave, it gave us our, it made us stand up straight because when we talked about slavery, we didn't talk about basically what they did and whipping us. We talked about people who either escaped slavery, made, made things better for slaves, or somebody who fought to abolish slavery, or somebody who created something mm -hmm. during that time mm -hmm. that made life easier for mm -hmm. black folks. So it was always the black excellence, Booker mm -hmm. T. Washington, mm -hmm. Eli Whitney, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Sojourner Truth, just the name mm -hmm. of you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so imagine the world without black folks and their contributions, open heart surgery, the traffic light, so many things that, so many things that America is using today, lights, for instance. It was a slave that was working with uh, Edison when he invented the bulb. It was a slave who, who invented the little, the little incandescent thing in there. And then, and then Edison just added the rest on there. So it's so many inventions that black people, that, that our, our people did to just make it and just show that they're human. So many achievements, but we don't talk about that because for whatever reason, the conversation got shipped from talking about the excellence that black folks did to now talking about the hell that we're going through. I never heard my grandparents complain so much. You know, they never complained back then. But like these days, it's young people complaining like they going through slavery. And I hear people saying, oh man, they couldn't have done me like that during slavery. They couldn't have done me like, you a damn lie because somebody, yeah, no, no. Hit, somebody hit you with that whip, your ass is gonna pick up that cotton. And, and, and that's exactly what's gonna happen because if, if, if these folks couldn't do you like that back then, why are they doing you like that now? Why why aren't you why aren't you bucking the system now? So we got to be careful when we talking to our own people because a lot of us are misinformed, and that misinformed information comes from not traveling outside of the country. When you don't travel and you're only confined to like one space, the information you're gonna get is just off the computer or what somebody tells you. And then you're going to run with that. So in terms of the black family structure, I think a lot of black people need to travel outside of the U.S. and go see how other families are living. And then it will it will reinforce your 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 duty to your family. Right. <laughs> Yeah, Did I but, but you know what the, the the biggest thing about the about the family is that we don't value courtship anymore. We just don't value that. Like we don't value anything, Walter. We want we want to have sex. That's what we value. Sex. We want to have. We want to free. We want to freak. That's what we want to do. We want. We, we want to freak. We don't care about if you got herpes. We don't care about if you bleed. If you got green stuff. We don't care about none of that. All no. we want to do is see your booty. See if you got a big one. See if you're gonna spend money. If you're gonna fly me out. We have gotten so low vibrational. Yeah, and see, sex was one of the things that black folks kind of was a little bit taboo about it was just certain things that you know they just didn't do, it just didn't do but like now nah, everything go and so when when you had that when you had that, that that group like they see black women right everybody knew there's certain things black women just wasn't gonna do and the things that black women wasn't gonna do it was respected it was like shit you, you want that done to you go to white girls you know, or, you know, I don't do that. But over time, society has made black women feel like not doing those things is the reason why you don't got no man. And right. that's not that's not true. Um, I feel like the reason why there's a, dis a big disconnect between black women and black women and black men is because that 
one, we all come from different tribes, right? And so in America, just because we look the same, we don't all think the same. Like, mm-hmm. like, 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 we just don't. Because I tell people this all the time. That was a period of time where slavery was illegal in America. They stopped bringing in slaves. And I'm glad, I'm glad we bring this up because we're going to talk about the woman king before I leave. Before I okay. Oh, yeah. yeah, let's talk about that. Well, it was a time where they stopped bringing slaves into America. So what do you do if you can't bring in no more slaves? You start breeding. So the black people that they had here, they started breeding them. And so as they bred them, they labeled them. So you take somebody from here and then you mix them with somebody that's a Cherokee Indian, you get a shade of black. You take this black person here, you take this black person here, you mix them, you breed them, you got this brand here. So that's how you got the mulattoes, the red bones, and all that. White folks named you that. White folks said, that's a mulatto over there. And this is this. This is that. This is that over there. They bred you. These white folks, your slave masters bred you, sold you just like dogs. Just like they would do a tree. How they splice a limb and put another limb on there. And then it's growing oranges and plums all at the same time. Same way they do with dogs. They take a pit bull and they throw them in, mix them and get another breed. That's how they deal with black people. And you don't think these white people know breeds of black people when they look at them? Why do you think certain jobs got certain colors of people in it? Certain, it's certain jobs, they got a light-skinned black, they like, damn, they only, they only hire light-skinned people here. Then you see certain jobs, it's like, Damn, it's a bunch of dark skin. It's number of dark skin dudes here. Damn, they only got this because they label shades of blacks. The darkest of the dark blacks, they consider the threat to a certain extent. Depending, so, on what, depending on what type of job you give them. Like a really, really dark skinned black person, they're not gonna push in for president. They're gonna push a light skinned black person for president. Well, less threatening. He he's less threatening. But if it's somebody you want to hire as a bodyguard or, or like in a force, be dark, big and black, be really dark and really big. Like, because really ain't no, we ain't taking no big pretty boy serious. Come on, man. He gonna look ain't like nobody taking no big pretty boy serious. No, you big, light skin, like, green eye. Yeah, we're not taking you serious. Look at right. the rock, Dwayne. What's his name? Dwayne Johnson. Dwayne He's Johnson. Funny. He's well, guess funny. What? They do black look women. At green rings. Van Ray, come on. They took this strong black man, right? Put him in two gay situations to like break him down. First, they put him in the uh, Pulp Fiction where he was getting hit from behind. That, that was that part on that. It was a guy raping him on there. Then he turned around and did the holiday, holiday heart. That really broke my heart right there because I said, damn, they got him playing the pump. And it's like, wow. They just did this to like a really, really masculine guy. Because he was in Baby Boy jacking up Tyrese. Like he was a really masculine guy. And then you see him in Pulp Fiction. He masculated him. Yeah, they 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 emasculated him in there, but then they tried to give him a break in there. So like the white boy was raping him in there. Well, it was a scene where, where Bruce Willis is in the movie. He's playing like this boxer. So Bruce Willis hears. Van Rain's getting raped in there. So he takes the sword and goes in there and slices the white boy that's raping him. Actually, a police that's doing it to him. He kills the white boy in there, right? Right after that, Van Rain's, he, I don't know, it's just really weird. But he says some stuff like, yeah, I'm going to call some real pipeline boys to come do him like that. Then he tell the white boy, I'm going to get real medieval on your ass. So <laughs> when he said that, to me as a man, I said, yeah, he finna do this white boy real bad because this white boy was doing him real bad. But as a black man watching this white man rape this black man, it did something to me. Have you it seen this, 
Yeah, it 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 it, it, it made me feel some type of way because that wasn't the image yeah. that I was wanting to see of a strong black man. Yeah, yeah, and that's and that image you like this this whole like I'm going back. It's a couple of things I wrote. Um, and then hold on, I am a woman king. So one thing I wanted, we we got off, but we gonna we gonna get back. We dark skin, light skin. That's that's the thing. I literally got into property management because of my skin, mm. and they were not um, at all hiring black women that were through and through black back when I got in. Right? Mm-hmm. You had to be long hair. You had to be you know black and hispanic looking more hispanic and and, and the thing that she told me was oh she said oh you're yeah stick her in the front Mm. and Mm. so i get in management right and we're talking about applications and hiring somebody and we've got this property in san antonio called the jacks Mm -hmm. our regional manager he says um Make sure whoever you hire looks like the Jacks. In the meantime, send AJ over there. I'm AJ. Okay. Because I look like the Jacks. I can't. Yeah. I'm not threatening. Right. 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 And at the time, I was wearing my wigs and not my regular hair. I don't think yet. Um, I felt some kind of way about that. Yeah, he said. I knew what that meant. So when the applications, I wasn't even gonna put a big, tall, strapping, dark-skinned sister in front of them. Mm -mm. I'm wasting her time. I know that doesn't look like the jazz. Doesn't fit the look. She may have all the skills, but she doesn't have the look. She don't have the look because you had. Look, back in the day, now property management has changed so much. Now you can have a monkey in there at this point, and, uh, and, you know. And I'm not saying I'm saying a real monkey. I'm somebody a monkey. You know what I'm saying? I didn't listen. I walked in, in walked in the office one day, and the manager had pink hair. And, oh Lord! Back in the day, when I first started property management in 2001, you could not have. Hair that did not grow out your skin color. I heard you had like a brown, you know, you know, if you was blonde, you could go blonde, but you couldn't do no purple hair and striping. Oh no, no, you you had to go down your hair. You couldn't do that. So I'm saying that to say that you're right. There in, in certain industries, there's a look with the emasculation of um being range. Men, black men have we got a like we were talking on a prayer call. We have got to pray about the black and man and to put him back in his position. Because at this point, only the man, the, the energy, the, the God that made him can stop this foolishness. Right. They playing these black men on dresses and they putting on dresses and the droves. Now, that's about money right there. So yeah, they lot- like pay me a million dollars. I don't care three million. I put on a dress for three million. A lot of guys who who come from nothing, um, they're gonna be more apt to doing stuff like that because you come from nothing, and then on top of that. You may feel like, man, this may be the only big payday. And, and how many? Yeah, I, I I may not get nothing else. So, and then two, black people don't look at things the same way as everybody else do. Like, I notice, like, anytime they want to push a new agenda, they'll come get one of us. You know, yeah. they'll come, they'll come get one of us to like do it. You know what I'm saying? And I'm gonna say it. They did that with Kamala Harris. But that might not what call me back. Yeah, yeah, they did that with Chuckson. Yeah, they did that with Chucks and Pearls, but they threw them Chucks and Pearls and black folk went crazy. Chuck. Black folk went crazy. Ah, they gave me that check. Ah, <laughs> and I posted on Facebook. And now, see, this is why I said we was dumb. 
She has she, eaten through chucks and pearls. And- she's a very good example of, of of what I mean by she her face fits her look. exactly uh, her look because in all honesty, it's supposed to be Stacey Abrams. She was the one who helped Biden win Georgia. She rounded up all those votes. She helped. Stacey got them dreads in her head. And, and she fat. So they're not going to have no, they not gonna have no fat black woman up there talking about. And then, and then Stacey's got that, you know, that like she like me. Besides, she really dark. Yes. So, so, so it's a look that, you know, they're looking for. You know, they, they, they'll be like, well, Stacey Abrams is good. You know, she's good to put on TV and push her and stuff like that. But her role as, like, getting votes for, like, the president and stuff like that, I think I think that's probably going to be it for her unless she wins the governor, the, the governorship of Georgia. But um, I don't think she's going to beat the incumbent. And then you got somebody like Herschel Walker uh, beat Warnock. Uh, the guy Warnock um, in a debate, so Herschel Walker may end up being the being the state representative in Georgia. You know what I'm saying? So you got a lot of stuff that optics, the way things you look. Be back so we can talk right. You gonna teach us about politics? The uh, way th- have- the way things look. Uh, what's coming up? Uh, we got the primaries right in November. Yeah, um, y'all need to be watching uh, that 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 Bear County Judge race between uh, Judge uh, Peter Sakai and um, Trish DeBerry. Mm-hmm. Um, if I was, I mean, I could still vote because I ain't been here six months. Um, I'm voting for DeBerry, Trish DeBerry, the 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 white lady, mm-hmm. uh, over Sakai. And mm-hmm. I, I mean, I have my reasons why, but um, I'm gonna I'm gonna vote for her. Um, now the city council race don't start till next year. Now that's a lady that's supposed to be running. I forgot her name. She's supposed mm-hmm. to be running the city council. She reached out to me. I gotta reach back out to her. Like I, I just like right now, I'm not really good with names. But um, as far as like in the city, mm-hmm. uh, I will vote. For the county judge, you got some state representative seats that's coming up. Um, of course, Barbara Hawkins is running. Nobody's gonna beat her because she never has a really worthy challenger. She's always running by herself. Then you got some state rep seats. I don't think you know these people. They they mostly like Hispanics or whites and stuff like that. So um you not they're not even in your district. Um what district are you in? I'm over. I don't, I I think this is. I don't know. I'm in Leon Valley. Oh boy, you in district um eight? Oh, okay. You in either district seven or district eight? Yeah, you you oh, somewhere I'm, around I'm, seven to eight. Okay, so I'm in Leon Valley somewhere. Well, if you're in Leon Valley, Leon Valley got their own. Leon Valley got their own stuff. Right. So I'm Leon Valley right here. I San Antonio. Oh. My address is San Antonio. But Leon Valley's right here. Okay, are you in Leon Valley or are you in San Antonio? I'm near. I should say near Leon Valley. Okay, so that means your your city councilman is either Manny Paez or John Courage. Is one of them two? Okay, I'm so, gonna find out. This yeah, it's probably. Life. Yeah, it's Leon Valley. It's probably John Courage. It's either John Courage or Manny Paez. It's one of them two. But I think it's John Courage is your city councilman. Okay. Either right. yeah, it's three. It's out of three of them. It's out of Courage, Sandoval, and Paez. But if I was a betting person, I'd say John Courage is your this. Year. He's a he's a good guy. I will I will I will, I will keep him in office. Um, the mayor, I would definitely vote against Mayor Nirenberg. Whoever's running against him, vote for the other person. Um, and that's kind of all I know right now. Um, okay. That's cool. Yeah. So San Diego, he gave us, you know, some some homework to find out yeah. why we need to vote for whoever, right? So we need to find out. So come on, y'all, because we got to be on these polls. We got to get on these Trish polls. Trish DeBerry. 
Yeah. Vote real quick. Vote Trish, Trish DeBerry. Berry. Trish, Trish DeBerry. DeBerry. That's mm-hmm. what she said. DeBerry. I don't know her. Oh, but he's the endorsing us. So it Trist Trist Terry. All right, Trista. So we need to tag you. <laughs> Saturday. Trish. It's Saturday. It's Saturday. Go Trish. So listen, what we live here, y'all. We're gonna do a couple of little commercials about Suda. We're gonna tell us about Suda, how we can find him. But listen, real quick, Woman King. I haven't seen it. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you I haven't seen it. Why you haven't I seen it? I haven't seen it because I understand that. Uh, there are weak women around, um, weak men around her, around the woman king. That men in the in the story is weak, and it is further pushing the agenda of the weak black man. So mm. I decided I wasn't going to participate simply because I'm totally against the agenda all the way. So my daughters went to go see it, and cousins went to see it, and they all came up with, yeah, I loved it, it was great, da, da, da. but it's very, it's giving very feminine black man energy. All right. Let me, let me, let me, let me break down a couple of things on that. I'm going to give you, I'm, first I'm going to start with Viola Davis. And first I want to start saying, I love Viola Davis. I yes. think she's a- I think she's a great actress. I, she's done well over 50 movies. She is phenomenal. Oscar Award winning actress. Like, I have nothing but love for her. Mm-hmm. She's been going through a few things in the last couple of years uh, concerning mm-hmm. her career. She has, mm-hmm. a, she has a few regrets about some roles she's mm-hmm. played uh, mm-hmm. in particular. That role on the help. Um, oh, really? She she did she does not she has regrets about playing that subservient role because the help turned into a meme on social media. It's a meme. So you know, uh, she also said complained about you know how much money she was getting paid and stuff like that, which is understandable. Um, but I, if you look at how much was spent for the movie, it was $50 million. That was the budget, not counting marketing costs, which is I heard was up in another $20 million. So say $70 million budgeted for this movie. You know how much money that movie they made already? Hmm. It just broke even after four or five weeks. It just broke even. It's probably fifty six million right now, total. And that's probably because everybody is saying about the because black people said they were going to boycott it. Well, one Viola Davis said, "Oh, y'all don't support this movie. Y'all don't support black women." She said that first before the movie came out. While she was promoting, she kept saying that. The second thing is is. How old is Viola Davis? Oh, um, she's fifty-seven years old. She's fifty-seven. So, with that knowledge, you would think like, "Whoa, maybe you're a little too old to be jumping around like that." But then somebody go, "Oh, no, watching you being a little harsh." Well, Lapita, that's who they originally wanted for the role was Lapita. Lapita turned it down. So did the the other girl from Black Panther, the bald head girl. She turned Mm -hmm. it down. The reason they turned it down was that the story was factually incorrect. That little tribe that Viola Davis is a part of on Woman King, that tribe was responsible for 80% of the slaves getting taken to, uh, getting sold. And then when the British stopped taking slaves, that group, the homie tribe, kept enslaving blacks and selling them to Portugal. So that group right there had a hand in a lot of the blacks getting sold off. But they will have you believe that it's this group that was doing this, doing that, when you start researching and stuff like that. So that was one of the main problems I had with the movie is that it was not accurate. Secondly, I know the backstory to Viola Davis, but the biggest thing is this. Paula Davis is not 
box office. She's a very mm. good actress, but she's not box office. And what I mean by box office is if I see an advertisement for a movie with Viola Davis starring in it, she's the headliner. I should be be like, man, I'm gonna go see this. Any movie she comes out with, I should be like, I'm gonna go see this. That's box office. She's not. Brad Pitt is box office. Um, matter of fact, no, no, no. I'm, I'm not even using no black people. Man, I'm not even using no white people. Zoe Saldana is black office. Box. box office. Lupita, box office. The bald head girl, I forgot her name, box office. I just read a list, and then you can look it up on Google. The top 30 earning actresses of all time. How much they didn't gross in the movies. Guess who number one? Oh. Scarlett Johansson. Guess who number two? Hmm. Zoe Saldana. Guess who's, guess who's like number four, number five? Lupita. Come on, Zoe, because Zoe was climbing in walls in that movie. Oh. Come on, Look, man. Chloe was walking up the ceiling in so, that movie. Oh. So, 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 like, black folks, black folks, a lot of us are not box office. Like, Chris, right. Chris Tucker was box office. Um, Denzel, box office. Uh, right. Angela Bassett, box office. Whitney yeah, Houston. Was, Whitney Houston, right. when she was alive, box office. You do a so, Whitney Houston movie right now, and she dead. She going to the box office. What you talking about? <laughs> they can remake Whitney and Bobby right now. We all going to see that. And that's what I'm saying is that uh, when you talk about the the, the black family, right? It all mm-hmm. comes down to to value. You know, like this black man has value. This black woman has value, and it starts with. Them two seeing the value in each other. In each other, yeah. This black man say, "Man, this black woman right here. I I see a wife, I see a mother, I see a partner, I see a soulmate." When this when this black woman looks at this black man, she says, "I see a friend, I see a husband, I see a helpmate, I see a father, I see a partner." Like 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 we have to see those things in each other, or we have to see we have to stop this what we don't want to do with mentality as if other races don't have things that we got to deal with when we're dealing with them yeah they got problems i mean they they man other races deal with i think in some instances a lot more than what we do because we deal with the relationship part and then maybe kids but then when you're dealing with other groups of people they dealing with that. They dealing with kids. They dealing with uh, division of assets. They dealing with, you know, setting up the family. Even though I'm not with you, but I'm going to set this family up to where my kids and their mama can, you know, thrive out here. It's like for us, you know, we just we with you until we're not with you no more. Then we're not with you. We don't even speak to you. We act like we don't know you. You know, and if and if I'm the breadwinner and you not. I'm gonna kick you out. I ain't gonna help you or nothing like that. And I'm gonna just move on to the next person. There's no sense of value in saying, right, oh, right. I don't wanna throw this relationship away yet. I wanna, right, you know, I wanna, right. I wanna work it out with you. And until we can find that that happy medium, um, we're gonna keep asking the questions on uh, how do we solve the problem. And I, I, right. I really think it starts with a self accountability. It just look it does. It's, it starts with self. So it you heard it here. You heard it here. And Jeanette speaks. Listen, we have done what we do. Now we've talked for a half because that's what we do. And we we just if you just look, listen, it's a whole lot of content in this one conversation. It is. <laughs> We're gonna yeah. have him back because he is a uh politician. I vote for Walter for president since we was little. Okay. <laughs> And so <laughs> I, I always thought he was going to be the president of the United States. It, it, not, not just the, just the president of uh, of a class of 1994. Okay, oh, the, you know he was he was my president. I don't know about nobody else. Thank you. Yeah. So, so this has been Walter Perry. Listen, if you 
to, he has Suit Up. And Suit Up is an organization that helps young African American men, uh, men and women dress up in a suit because when you suit it up, you feel better. It helps them with their self esteem and their what values. And that will ex ex extend to their children. And their children will suit up and their children's children will suit up because that's what we're doing. Why? Change the generation. <laughs> I gave you home clothes. <laughs> I just want to say, thank you. yeah. I just want to say thank you. No, no, I just want to say thank you for bringing me on and just uh, telling all the viewers, just staying patient with us on this Saturday. And you know, y'all could be out having fun, but y'all kicking it with us on this Saturday. Y'all kicking it with us. Listen, yeah. like, share, comment. Feel feel free to give us feedback. Find Walter Perry. Um, uh, suit up, find him. He sees that suit up. Make sure I get it right. So, we are at Facebook, it is called uh, We Are Suit Up. We are, suit up. we are suit up. Let me know if I get it right. And then, Suit Up World on Instagram, Suit Up The World, The World, Suit Up The suit World up. on Instagram, Instagram. Suit Up I The World. It. And you can also go on Facebook. World. Yeah, we have a Facebook page, Suit Up the World LLC on Facebook as well. So y'all can go on there. Awesome. So listen, this is a legitimate organization. We are helping real kids. If you have gently used clothes, suits, things like that, you want to donate to help these children go get applications, box, use, all of that stuff. We got you. Suit Up got you. <laughs> So reach, reach out to him. You can't reach out to him. Reach out to me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Walter Perry. I'm That's Walter. Me. Listen, listen y'all don't you. know him in Georgia. Y'all don't know him in Houston. But he's somebody in San Antonio. He east side. Okay? He ours. All right? He belong to us. Listen, mm -hmm. this has been another edition of Engineer Speaks, the, the raw and the inspiring. Thank you so much, Indoor Entertainment, for allowing us to be on the channel. Listen, when you think of Endure Entertainment, think of Clean Entertainment. And when you think of Clean Entertainment, think of Endure Entertainment. We appreciate you rocking with us. Any last words you want to say, Walter, before we go? Yeah, I just want to say go Road Runners, UTSA Road Runners, go. <laughs> All right. Have a good one. All uh, right, you too. Bye. Hi guys, I'm Lady Falana, CEO and founder of Endure Entertainment. When you think of clean entertainment, think of Endure Entertainment. When you think of Endure Entertainment, think of clean entertainment. The Endure Entertainment Television Personality.